Welcome back to CIS 165. I'm Victor Campos. So we're in week seven of the class now, and that also means we're in chapter five of the book, Document Object Model. So be sure you check out that chapter before watching this video. Based on what we've learned so far, we're going to create something pretty fun. This is an example of the end result. So this is the Marvel heroes versus villains. There's going to be a hero versus a villain, and there's going to be a result. So we'll click Fight. What happens then is a hero is loaded up and a villain. The hero and the villain each have their own various power stats, and in this case, Spider-Man loses the fight. Fight again. This time, Spider-Man versus Magneto. And whoops, the web crawler uh, didn't uh, have a good day either, so he lost. Next is Daredevil versus Black Cat. Black Cat used her powers and beat Daredevil. Then we've got Thing versus Venom, and it was a tie. They're evenly matched enough that they went to a standstill. Jean Grey versus Black Cat. So every time we load up the project, we get new stats. Daredevil, Doctor Doom, Daredevil loses. Thing versus Black Cat. Spider-Man vs. Super Scroll. So this is what we're going to create in the end. I'll provide you these graphics. You can provide your own if you'd like for the project. But let's get this functionality to work. So you want to create a new week and copy the index file as before. Start Visual Studio Code. Open the folder for week 7 and the index.html file. We're working with chapter 5. And the project is Heroes versus Villains. We'll need a button to activate the results. So we can create that button. Let's say Fight. ID. BTN Fight. Next, we'll create some divs to display this content. So a div is a generic container. I'll create three of them inside of a parent element. We need to give these names, IDs. We'll have div show fight. Then we're going to have IDs. For each of these, div left call, left column, div right call, the right column, and div center call. So on the left side, we're going to have the hero, on the right side, the villain and in the center, result. That will change dynamically as the button is pressed to make them fight. So of course, nothing is quite visible on screen yet. Next in the JavaScript, the way this will work is that each character will have different dimensions of power, intelligence, speed, strength, etc. So we'll create a variable called max stats that's equal to six. There are six dimensions of power for each character. Comma, next we'll have max stats value equal to seven. The maximum stat value is seven. A character can have between one and seven powers, power levels of speed, of durability, etc. Next, a variable for hero names. This is an array. So we'll start off with Spider-Man, Daredevil, and Squirrel Girl. Hero 
strength will be an array tied to each of those three characters, which is empty at the moment. Hero speed will also be a value tied to each character. Hero agility. Same thing. Hero stamina. Hero durability. And hero intelligence. We're also going to save the hero names len, hero names length. Ah, we'll spell it out. Hero names length. And that's equal to hero names dot length. How many heroes we have saved in that array, of course. Hero all will be an array that will store a complete hero, because a complete hero is a name, strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, and intelligence. So similar to the previous assignment, hero all length. I need to keep track of how many heroes I have created. So the length of that array. And then hero image, semicolon. So I've got images that we can borrow for these characters. I've got them on a server. HTTPS VMC INK dot files dot WordPress dot com 2016 slash 10 slash Spider Man dot PNG. That's a picture tied to Spider-Man. And I'll have the exact same thing for the other characters. So I'll just copy and paste this. It's the same server path and such. So I'll paste it the same. But instead change it to Daredevil dot ping. And then paste again Squirrel Girl. dot ping. So that's a list of all of the images for the heroes. I want to generate the various power levels. This will be via random numbers. So a for loop. We can note and for loop hero powers. So we'll go from a var of i zero, as long as i is less than max stats and increment i plus plus. So I have a total of six stats to generate power levels for. And that's the Strength, Speed, Agility, Stamina, Durability, and Intelligence. We'll create Temp Hero Strength. And that will be math.seal. We're going to round up math.random times max stats value. So right now, give me a random number from 1 up to 7, because our max stats value is 7. A character can have up to a strength of 7, minimum of 1, because of math.seal. I need the exact same thing for temp hero speed equals basically all of that. So we can just copy and paste it. Again, it's round up to the ceiling randomly max stats value so you should get the idea here so temporary values of strength speed agility stamina durability and intelligence k 
continuing in my for loop. Once I generate those numbers, I need to add them to each array. So hero strength dot push. So into this array, we're going to push temp hero strength. Into the hero speed array, we're going to push temp hero speed and the rest. So all of this happens in that for loop. We develop the hero's power levels and store them into the array. We need to do something very similar for the villains. So a variable for the villain name will have the classic matchups Spider-Man versus Venom, Daredevil versus Kingpin, Squirrel Girl versus the Black Cat. I then need villain strength, villain speed, and the rest. Like before, I need villain names length. And that's set to villain names dot length. Give me that property. Villain all. Now be careful about plurals and such. Villains, villain, hero, heroes. Be careful about that. But with visual code autocomplete, it should help you out. And that is an array which will include all of that info grouped together. I need to know the length of this array and then villain image. I can end my variable creation there. And pretty much like how I have up here for the heroes, it's the same server and path and everything. You just need to change the particular character. So I'll just do some pasting here. So I'm pasting, and this time it's going over to venom.ping, comma, then it's going to kingpin.ping, and then blackcat.ping. I need a for loop just like I have before to generate the villain's powers and to store them into those empty arrays. For loop. for loop villain powers. Same as before, we're starting with i of 0 until we get to i of max stats i++. We'll have a var temp villain strength which is math dot seal math dot round math dot random multiplying up to max stats value and I'll need that for the other five dimensions of power copy and paste works great if you have your code correct you don't want to copy and paste the wrong thing over and over. But in a sort of a sense with autocomplete, as long as it's spelled wrong several times consistently, it might not quite be a mistake. After intelligence, that's the last item. So next, after generating all of these power levels, we have to push them into the arrays. So continuing inside of the for loop, we push these temporary values 
into each array. They're no longer empty. Outside of the for loop, it's time to create our objects using constructor notation, super character. And super character object. All right, so the super character is then defined by its name, strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, intelligence, and image. So all of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight properties are defined inside of this constructor. Just like we've seen before, this.name is equal to name provided this.strength is equal to the strength provided, and so forth. Next up is a couple of methods, this.power and this.stats. So our power method and our stats method. Power is going to be an addition of all of the dimensions of power, strength plus speed plus agility, etc. So the way a hero or a villain is determined to win is to have all of their stats added up. So we'll have a variable, all power, and that's this dot strength plus this dot speed plus this dot etc. We are going to simply add up all of the numeric values here, and plus will operate like a standard addition, and all of that will be stored under all power. Next, we will return all power. So when we invoke the power method of the super character object, we will get back one number that's an addition of all of their sub levels of power. On screen, I want to display in a nice readable format each of the strength, speed, agility, etc. So var all stats. This one will be more about string concatenation. So we will have an unordered list. That's bullet points. And each of those items, strength, speed, agility, etc., will be a bullet point. So knowing what we need to do, I'm going to write it like this. End of that string plus stuff in the middle. Start that string again so that I can end the unordered list. Semicolon, end of JavaScript. Because then in between, I'm going to have another string. So quotes plus to continue the string. This is where a list item will exist for strength. I want to display that value of strength that we've generated. Well, that's going to be dynamic. So we've got to break our string right here, plus something, and then continue the string. So show the static element, then the dynamic element. We've done that before. We need to show this dot strength. And I need the exact same thing for the next bullet point. Start the string, plus to continue it, list item, end of the list item, speed, text, space, and that quote, plus something, plus continue the quote, this dot speed. and then the next four.
all of this is a string, all stats, which we then return. So calling power method adds up all of the individual power levels and gives, that, gives back that result. And stats method creates a string with all of this info in a nice bullet point list and gives it back. So outside of the super character object, now it's time to actually put it all together. For loop. This will be the end of our hero creation for loop. Var of i starting at 0, i less than hero names length. So however many number of heroes I have, I want to do this x times, in my case 3, semicolon i plus plus. And what I'm going to do three times is var a hero equal to new space super character. From the hero names array, give me the i value, the zero width value, and from the hero strength array, give me the i or zero width value, and so forth. So we start off with the zero width index value of each of the arrays, so Spider-Man, plus all of those random power levels, plus the hero image. All of those are arguments in the new super character object. Next, well, that con constitutes a complete character. So into hero all, we will push the a hero object into it. For the villains, I need the same thing, a for loop. This will be our villain creation loop. Also from i to 0, i up to villain names length, i++. plus plus. variable a villain is equal to a new super character object. Created that character once, created that super character object once, and then we can reuse it as necessary. This is the great thing about programming. Once you figure out the algorithm, you can then save yourself a lot of time and effort. And yeah, so far it's taken me a hundred lines to get up to this point. But once this is set up, adding to it will be a lot faster. It's a little tedious here and there, but again, once you set up the algorithm, the way to do it, it goes by faster. And with auto-completion, like in Visual Code, it should go a little bit faster too. So now I need to supply all of the villain names, villain strength, villain image, etc. And same as before, but this time to the villain all array, I will push a villain object. We've done a lot of typing so far. We haven't tested anything for a long time, and there could be a lot that had gone wrong. I obviously have my notes and my goal of what they should look like, but I can make mistakes too. Let's see what happens. I want to see if, if this stuff worked. So obviously in the real world you'd be testing much more often as you're trying to figure out the algorithm. Console output is your friend. So the way to check if this is working 
is we can say in the console all heroes show me the hero all array the contents of that array as well as console log all villains show me the villain all array fingers crossed let's see what happens all right so before I do anything line 75 uncut reference villain strength is not defined okay probably a misspelling let's see line 75 villain strength dot push so it's saying villain strength is not defined okay well that's supposed to be my array that I created up here so simple mistake I wrote villi in strength and I think I did it a few other times I corrected it I corrected it quickly in between shots of creating this video but anyway villain and villain okay simple mistake there I'm surprised it didn't catch it when I was auto uh, typing all right let's see next refresh okay so one spelling mistake great all heroes object 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 so I do have three objects being saved so far into the first array and the other array to then fully see what that particular object is you can change your console output to say okay the zero width or the first hero and then the zero width villain the name property of that object give me the name of the zero width character spider-man and venom okay give me the speed of each of those characters they both got a six okay give me the power method of that hero and villain spider-man had 14 venom had 23 he would have lost what about the second what about the third character which is should be squirrel girl versus black cat that was 16 to 38 okay so we're getting some result to test it let's do this I'm going to say hero plus hero all zero with hero dot name plus space power plus So now I'm saying, give me the name of the zero with hero and then run the power method of the zero with hero. Same thing here. Villain. Villain all zero dot name plus concatenate to say power to forget those spaces of the zero with villain result spider-man power 19 venom power 17 and every time I refresh this a new set of random numbers is generated so spider-man has 22 versus venom 18 this time venom had 30 and spider-man only 20 so he would have lost well if we're able to get this to run then it's time to check who actually has more power and then display all of that on screen so moving on now that we've created these characters stored them in the array we need to update the variable that contains the length of the array of how many heroes and villains in this case three 
So hero all length is equal to hero all dot length. Check the length property of what it currently is and store it into hero all length. Villain all length is equal to villain all length all dot length. Knowing this, I can set up the ability for them to actually fight. So now I'll create some variables to represent the various objects in the HTML block. First we'll start with the LBTN fight is equal to document dot get element by ID in this case BTN fight. Now auto completion might not kick in at this point because I'm trying to access items up in the HTML block. What you can do in visual code is split screen view so that you can see two parts of the same document at once instead of scrolling up. You can go up to view and there's split editor which is control backslash. Once you do that it copies my current index file into two separate views. The point of that is that then in this other view, I can go back to the top to confirm the names of all of these IDs if they don't autocomplete. Depending how big your monitor is and your zoom and all of that, this might be comfortable or it might be too, too tight. You'll have to zoom in or out. Comma, continuing. L div show fight and that's equal to document dot get element by ID the div show fight and the same thing for the left right and center columns So having this split view will help me look at these IDs that I named them all properly. BTN fight, div show, fight, div left call, div right call, div center call. All right, while I'm here, I'm also going to define two more things. And this touches back onto the DOM manipulation that we talk about in this chapter. L, U, L, all equal to document dot get elements by tag name so we've seen get element by ID for a while and now we're seeing get elements by tag name notice how that is plural get elements there's only one thing that should be called that particular ID so it's get element by ID but there are oftentimes many copies of other tags. So this is get elements by tag name. And we're going to store them all in L U L all. A list of all unordered list items. So we're searching for all instances of an unordered list. Comma L image all is equal to document dot get elements by tag names IMG so any instances of images image tags store them in that variable semicolon I don't need my split screen anymore so I can close that next I can set myself up that when I click that button I'll make the characters fight L BTN fight dot add event listener waiting for the click event comma run the function fight comma false for bubbling and so therefore we need to define what is the function fight function definition
This is the function that determines who won. So a variable, random hero. I want to pick a hero randomly from my array of heroes. Math.floor first, because what I want to do is be able to pick zero inclusive. Math.random times hero all length. So I have three heroes at the moment. Pick one of those three. Comma. I also need a random villain. Math.floor math.random times villain all length. Semicolon there. All right, so the way we will determine who wins, we'll, we'll put it in terms of the hero is battling the villain. Did the hero win? Did the hero lose? Or was there a tie? So we'll have an if statement. If hero all random hero dot power. All right, so from the hero array, hero all, we're going to pick a random hero, invoke the power method, so it'll give you a number. We've seen that before. We'll then have equals, equals, equals. That's a triple equals. Space villain all array random villain dot power method. If the power of the hero is exactly equal to the power of the villain, this must be a tie. Spider-Man has three and Venom has three, so it's a tie. Triple equals is checking for equality of numbers, as opposed to a single equals, which is an assignment operator. We would have been assigning what's on the right to the left. Double equals is checking numeric equality, but triple equals is also then checking type equality. It's a stronger way to check. It checks if numbers are numbers, and if the number is the same number. So let's say for the testing purposes that we say here, it's a tie. All right, so, well, what if the hero's power is greater than the villain? So we can ask another question, sort of chain it in. Else, if, and again here, check something. So we've had if, else, two possibilities. Now we're saying, there's one possibility, if, and here's another possibility, if, else if. Hero all random hero dot power method. If it's greater than, so that is the greater than symbol, not just the angle bracket that you might be used to. If it's greater than, the villain all random villain in question, its power level. That would mean that console log hero wins. Else, well, the third possibility, the final possibility, is that the hero loses. We don't even have to check for less than, because we have the possibilities of the same, greater than, or else the final thing is that it's less than. So here's a way to check three possibilities. So simply console log the hero lost. Let's run this. Refresh, no errors so far. Press of a button. Hero lost. Now at the moment, this output from lines 121 and 122 happen before the button click, before the creation of the character. So if I choose fight, it may not exactly line up. 
Spider-Man lost here, sure, but if I run it again, this is actually different instances of the different characters. So what we could do to see this more accurately, in this fight function, we need to display who are the ones fighting. So I'm actually going to take lines 121 and 122 and cut them so that I can put them inside of that function, the fight function, after the random number generation. I'm going to say, display the particular villain and hero in question. Not the zeroth hero, but the currently selected random hero. Not the zeroth villain, but the currently selected random villain. And then the power of the currently selected random hero, and the power of the currently selected random villain. So we've seen that working before, and now we're putting it in the context of the fight function, which then has to do with the particular hero and villain. So now we get a more accurate console output. Refresh that. Fight, in this case, Squirrel Girl versus Black Cat, 27 to 27, it's a tie. Fight again, a different matchup. Spider-Man versus Black Cat. Spider-Man has 32. We saw a moment ago Black Cat had 27. So, hero wins. Fight again. Daredevil, 26. Kingpin, 27. He loses. Now, it's not completely random because there's only three to choose from. But as we add more of these characters, as per the homework, this will uh, be, be more interesting. All right, so if we have this console output working, now it's actually time to make it display on screen. We'll start with the tie. L div left column for the hero dot inner HTML is equal to h2 plus the current hero in question their name close that tag now we can continue to add plus at the end of this string, or to get practice, because this often happens as well. I will end that statement. Then l div left column dot inner HTML. Be very careful here. Plus equals. We're continuing to add to whatever is in the current left column. Next will be the image for the hero. So img source is equal to something, single quotes. Well, that something is going to be hero all random hero dot image. This needs to be dynamic. So we actually have to end the string and continue the string. So I wrote it all out completely first for you to see what it needs to be. If I were to run this, it wouldn't work because hero all dot image is not being processed as JavaScript. It's being processed, processed as HTML. So what we need to do, end the string right there, plus space, plus quote. So the string started, then there's the dynamic element, the string continued. Now be careful here, for me it did double quotes. I just need that single quote. Visual code got a little confused here. So I need that single quote that closes that single quote. So be careful might be easier to do it now that we know what we're doing. L div left call dot inner HTML e plus equals to continuing to add P tag 
plus hero all random hero dot stats. This is all of those bullet points plus the continuation of the p tag. Next, I need the same thing for the villains. L div right column dot inner HTML is equal to H2 to display the villain, their image, and their stats. All right, so this would display the hero on the left and the hero on the right if there is a tie. So if we were to get a tie, these things would display. That's pretty uncommon, a tie. So I'm going to set it up for the win and for the loss. I actually can use all of this code as is for each of these. So into the win, into the loss. Just paste all three. Now when they fight, I haven't actually set up left and right columns yet, but I see Squirrel Girl, all of her stats, Kingpin, all of his stats. And I need to double check here. I've got some stray code before result. But over here, the hero would have lost. So if I run this again, this time I get Spider-Man, Venom, he would have lost as well. Let's see what's going on with this stray tag. This is happening on the example of a lost. So I should look in my lost block. Hero wins, hero lost. Oh, silly me. So uh, I didn't quite close the, the tag. P tag. Where's the closing P tag? So that's the thing that I said about copying and pasting. If your code works, then copying and pasting is great. If it doesn't work, it won't be so great. I was thinking in terms of the ending of the P tag. I was thinking in terms of the ending of the uh, image tag, which was the line right above it. So yeah, P tag closes right there. Close that p tag. Don't need that extra apostrophe. Why is that there? There we go, p tags. Refresh that. Spider-Man, my, co my console, Spider-Man versus Venom. Spider-Man wins. No stray stuff, great. All right, so functionality-wise, it works. Visually, it's pretty bad. I want them actually to be columns left and right and such. So this is where some CSS is going to come in. CSS cascading style sheets will allow us to align things up pretty nicely. So we need to back up all the way to the beginning, all the way to the HTML section. In the HTML section, we're going to uh, in the head block, create a style block. So this is all CSS. We have a show fight ID that we need to stylize. So this will be pound, which represents the div. It's ID show fight. Curly braces. So this width will be 100%. So our show fight div will stretch out to 100% of the screen. Next, we'll deal with the left and right columns. Div left call background color blue color of text white text align center. The width of this 
column will be 50% of the screen. And then float left so that things line up nicely. Next, we need to deal with the right column for where the villain is. Div right call, very similar. Background color, red. Color of text, white. Text align also to the center. The width is also 50%. And it will also float to the left. You may have thought of right, but that has to do with other CSS properties, so this is a better result. Next, div center call. We need to clear both here, or else this center div would have continued along with the right div, so we need to clear it. The width of this div will say 98%. That seems to work well from my testing. And then text align, center that. Next, we will dynamically change the center column to be the color of either the hero or the villain, or if it's a tie. So dot fight tie. The dot means it's a class, so we'll apply a class. Background color, yellow. Color of the text, black. And padding 1M to separate the text a little bit from the edges. So the background color there will be blue. The center column, which announces, will become blue with a color of text of white if the hero wins. Padding of 1M. And then if the hero loses, well, fight.lose background color will be set to red. Color of the text will be white. And padding also will be 1M. Let's see what that looks like. So it starts off, first of all, the left and the right columns are defined. There's the blue and the red before we fight. Then when we select a fight, we have the left and right columns of each of the characters. Looks good. Then we have each of their stats. The text is centered, which works for the name of the character, but perhaps not for their actual stats. I want to put their stats back to the left. What I also want to do is change the text there that I've been talking about, about who won which result won. So when I fight again, Spider-Man versus Black Cat, console says hero wins, I need to display that on screen. So continuing with our CSS, dot text align, I'm going to set that to text align, center, left. This is a class that I'm going to attach dynamically with JavaScript i.e. DOM manipulation, to move the bullet points to the left. Also, image height. I think it's a little too tall. I'd like to uh, make the height of the images a little smaller. So height of the image, we'll do 360 pixels. And again, that will be attached via CSS to make the images smaller dynamically. To put this into play, I'll go back to the very end of my code where I have the win, lose, or draw, starting with a draw with a tie. We've got the code for the left column. Next, L image all, brackets zero, dot class name is equal to quotes, image height. So what I'm saying here is we have a list of all images in the project, which was set up previously. 
right here l image all so get all examples of the image tag get elements by tag name the zero width image the first image the one on the left for the hero we're setting its class oops there should not be a space there we're setting its class its css class we're attaching image height to the first image so what we created up here image height it's a class with a dot so image height very similar then l u l o the zero width set of unordered list set its class name to the class we created of text align for the villain we want the same image and alignment l image all one so starting from zero one is the second image in on the screen and it will also have the same image height l u l all index of one the second set of bullet points its class name will be set to text align so when there's a tie the images will resize and their text will align well also when there's a tie l div center call dot inner HTML I want to display text on screen it says a tie and that div L div center dot call set its class name to fight tie note, note there is no first dot like we defined up in the CSS block there's no dot in front of these classes in the JavaScript because we're saying set the class name so it assumes that whatever's in these quotes is a class so it doesn't need the dot I need this for the villain and the hero and the result and all three of these possible results so first I'll start with the heroes stuff I'm gonna copy the alignment and such for the hero and I'll paste it in the win condition and then I'll paste it into the lose condition next I'll copy the villains class settings and paste them into the win condition and the lose condition And lastly, the text that displays on screen. Well, this code copied and pasted exactly won't quite work because there's text that says a tie, which I wanted to say winner, and then fight tie will actually be fight win. But you can save yourself a little bit of effort by copying that in, and then you have to change it. So after the villain result, here we have to say hero wins. and that's set to the class of fight win I still have that copied so I can paste it because then now that center call will need to say hero loses and fight lose saving it and running it starting point pick a fight the images have decreased size that's what I wanted the center column has changed color to show hero loses fight again daredevil versus venom he wins now if you moments if you noticed a moment ago there was a little bit of a gap and a little bit of broken code it didn't show up here because this is under the win condition if 
I do that again and the hero loses, this is telling me that I need to troubleshoot. Something's happening in the lose block. I have some stray extra angle brackets and such. Let's see, under lose. Let's see if we can spot. Where do I have this extra? Oh, this is again that issue. I thought I fixed that. I'm missing the ending of my P tag. There we go. That was the P tag for the villain stats. Now when I refresh it, Squirrel Girl versus Venom, Hero wins. All of her power adds up to overpower Venom. Daredevil Kingpin, he wins. Daredevil, can I get a loss? Okay, Spider-Man versus Black Cat. We can see by the um, console, he's got 18, she's got 20, so that's a loss. And this changes to show it's a loss. Now getting a tie is going to be pretty difficult usually. So here's one way to check that a tie works. If you go all the way back to the beginning of your code, max stat 6, max stat value 7. There are seven possibilities to be added up. I think if we just put it down to one, this should give us much more possibility of a tie. So back on line 78 at the beginning, but still 78 lines down. Let's see what happens there. Can we get more ties? Daredevil versus Black Cat. Yep, every, every one of these is a one, so that all adds up to six. It's a tie, so everyone will be a tie. And now that color is obvious. As we have even more power levels, let's say up to 11. Let's turn it up to 11. There'll be even less possibilities of a tie. So we fight. Spider-Man lost. He's got 30, she's got 31, barely lost. Another fight, Daredevil versus Venom. He's got 31, he's got 41, big loss. Spider-Man Venom, he's got 30 to 41, and that's a loss. So this chapter focused on DOM manipulation, because notice also what we did is we aligned those stats to the left via JavaScript, adding a class. We also added these colors via a class. And depending on the result of the fight, we have different items happening, different results, different feedback down on the center column. Since we don't have that many characters to work with, it's not as random as it could be. But the homework will be, when you check the full requirements, you're going to add more characters to get this to be more random and interesting. And you'll have shown that you understand DOM manipulation in JavaScript. And with an epic battle of Squirrel Girl versus Black Cat being a tie, this has been Victor Campos for CIS 165.